Hello YouTube, this is Jay here, back with another two months long experiment. This time I wanted to show you something that I didn't really discuss much in detail in my channel, and that is carbon dosing. I only mentioned carbon dosing briefly in my no water change series. Um, that's because I don't really like carbon dosing for reasons I'll get into later. But in any case, first I think I'll have to explain what carbon dosing actually is. Carbon dosing is the practice of adding something, a carbon, so a carbon source, such as vodka or sugar, into your fish tank to get rid of nitrates. So you may be wondering, how the hell can adding vodka or sugar get rid of nitrates? Um, so let me explain. The way uh, bacteria work inside your tank is there are bacteria that eat up leftover fish foods, whatever nutrients they can get in a tank, they use that food to survive, and they need oxygen to breathe, just like us. They eat food, they use the oxygen to burn the food and derive calories from that food. And that food can be stuff like alcohol or sugar. Um, but if the bacteria are in a low oxygen environment, such as a deep substrate, so if you have a tank like me and you have a deep substrate, bacteria that are, that are living deep inside the substrate, they do not have access to the oxygen in the water. So when there is not enough oxygen, uh, bacteria can do something different. So for us, if we don't have the oxygen, we die. We can't derive calories from the food and we die. Um, but bacteria, when there's not enough oxygen, they can use something else. They can use stuff like nitrates and sulfates. So oxygen is the most efficient thing that they can use. Oxygen is the best at burning the food. They, using oxygen can derive the most amount of energies from the food. But if you don't have it, Instead of dying, the bacteria will turn to something else. They'll use something that's not as good, but that's something that still works, such as nitrates. So that is how bacteria can get rid of nitrates, is they breathe away the nitrates. They breathe the nitrates, turn it into nitrogen gas, and that is how bacteria in uh, low oxygen conditions can get rid of nitrates. Um, this process is limited usually by the food. So by adding food, such as sugars or uh, alcohol, um, you're feeding the bacteria, and more bacteria, more food means uh, more bacteria, and that means there's more bacteria to breathe away the nitrates. So you're adding sugar or vodka as food just separately for the bacteria that your fish or other creatures cannot get to. So that you're adding like special food just for the bacteria. Normally the bacteria will live off of uh, leftover food that the fish can't get to, um, what you're doing with carbon dosing, you're just adding food specifically for that bacteria to boost their growth. Uh, and the term carbon dosing gets a bunch of people confused. They hear the word carbon dosing and they say, oh, can I just add graphite or charcoal? Those things are both carbon. Uh, shouldn't that work as well? Well, no, because as I said, you have to add food for the bacteria. It's not just adding any carbon. Any carbon won't work. You need something that the bacteria can eat. So graphite, charcoal, nope. Um, ethanol and uh, sugar, yes. So you cannot add carbons like graphite or uh, charcoal uh, to get rid of nitrates. It's, it's not going to work. You need to add a carbohydrate. You need something that you can eat. So if removing nitrates is as easy as adding vodka to your fish tank, then why don't we do it all the time? Um, well, there's reasons, and I'll get into that, but uh, first let's see the experiment to see if it actually works. So this is my deep substrate planted no water change tank, which I used for a nine-month-long experiment in my previous video. If you want to see that, check the links in the description. Um, in the previous video, I showed that this setup was able to process about 0.7 grams of fish food per week before nitrates started to increase. So this tank can uh, denitrify uh, 0.7 grams of fish food, no problem. And that is its limit. So what I'm trying to see here is if I can add uh, vodka to increase the limit, that is 0.7 grams of food. So I fed the tank 0.8 grams a week. That is uh, 0.1 grams more than it was being fed. That is more food than this fish tank can handle. So uh, the nitrate level started to increase after two weeks. The nitrates went from about zero to about 25 milligrams per liter, which is a moderate amount. It's not enough to really harm your fish. It's still a pretty low and acceptable level, but it has definitely uh, gone up in the two weeks of extra feeding. So at this point, two weeks into the experiment, I started adding one mils of 4% ethanol per day. Uh, which I made by diluting vodka with water. 
and after one week of vodka dosing, nitrates dropped from 25 to 12.5. It halved, uh, but a side effect occurred, which is ammonia increasing to 1.5 milligrams per liter. So why did ammonia increase? That is a side effect of carbon dosing, and I'll explain the reasons later. So after one week of vodka, nitrates went from 25 to 12.5. Ammonia went from 0 to 1.5. So here is what the nitrates and ammonia level looks like during the two month course of the experiment. So for the first two weeks, I was just doing extra feeding, uh, extra feeding to increase the nitrates artificially to 25. And that's when I started adding one mils of 4% vodka per day. So after one week, I did a measurement and the nitrates dropped, but ammonia, which was at zero previous to add, uh, previous to adding vodka, the ammonia level spiked to 1.5 and at week two the ammonia level stabilized again to about zero and uh, it stayed that way for the rest of the experiment nitrate levels also stayed stable so at week three i increased the dose of vodka to 1.2 mils i wanted to see if i can add i could add extra vodka to uh, reduce the nitrates further um, that did not work at week six i increased the vodka to 1.5 mils and that still didn't do much to nitrates. So in any case, the nitrates stayed stable throughout the experiment, and the addition of vodka was able to lower the nitrates, but it had a side, side effect of causing a brief uh, ammonia peak. But in any case, did it work? Yes. So it maintained low nitrates, stable for two months. So uh, with, the additional, uh, with the addition of vodka, I was able to increase the amount of food that the uh, no water change tank was able to handle. So why do I not like doing carbon dosing? Why do I not carbon dose all the time? First, I think I have to explain the ammonia increase that happened at week one. So what's happening is a side effect of carbon dosing. So think of your bacteria as like a factory. They are eating the food and they're using the nitrates and what happens is these nitrates can be converted to nitrogen gas, which is harmless and flies away into the air, but it can also produce ammonia. So these two reactions happen simultaneously. So what's going on is the ammonia, um, normally in your fish tank, um, that is fuel for the nitrifying bacteria. So bacteria in your filter, they will breathe the oxygen, they'll use lots of oxygen, and they will burn the ammonia and turn it into nitrate. What food can do is this is a process that releases energy here, right? So if you add energy, you can actually reverse the reaction. So the energy from the food can fuel a reaction uh, by the bacteria that turns the nitrates back into ammonia. So adding this energy can actually uh, add fuel for this reaction as well. So what ends up happening is um, so what ends up happening is you have the nitrates that have been produced in your fish tank um, by your filter. So your fish are going to produce ammonia. That, uh, that ammonia comes from uh, digested fish food. So that ammonia, your filter, is going to turn that into nitrates. And these nitrates, uh, the bacteria in the deep substrate, they're going to eat the food, which can be leftover fish food. It can be sugar. It can be vodka. And they eat this food and they breathe this nitrate and they can either produce uh, nitrogen gas or they can produce ammonia. So adding more food um, does more of this reaction, which means you can end up with more nitrogen gas, but you also end up with more ammonia. So in the side here, you have this sort of a wasteful reaction where you're producing ammonia that gets denitrified into nitrates, and then it just keeps going in this uh, rather wasteful loop and you have the desired effect going on here, which is nitrates being converted into nitrogen gas. So that is a side effect to be noted, but ultimately um, your filter can compensate for it usually. So uh, in the end, it usually isn't such a big problem, but it is something to be aware of. That is why it is recommended that if you want to do carbon dosing, you want to do it incrementally. You want to start off with a really small amount of alcohol or sugar, and you want to increase it gradually over time. That way you can avoid ammonia spikes from happening. I don't dose carbon because A, it's not necessary. I've shown in my previous experiment with plants and deep substrate, I can maintain a highly overfed tank for months without water changes, no problem. I've never had the need to add extra vodka or 
um, sugar to boost the bacteria population so that I can get rid of more nitrates. That has never been necessary. The plants and deep substrate alone were enough to handle a heavily overfed tank, which I've shown in my previous, previous experiments. So why do the extra work of adding vodka or sugar to your tank uh, every day when you don't even have to do it? So for me, it's just not necessary. And uh, the whole point of doing a no water change tank, uh, well, not the whole point, but a big reason for doing a no water change tank is it's less work. Um, and you're doing it for less work, but if you're adding, you, if you're going to have to add vodka every day, then that's more work. So I just don't see the point. Now in saltwater tanks where doing water changes or making a no water change conditions could be more challenging. Maybe it's an option, but for fresh water, I just, I just never felt the need to do it. So carbon dosing is something that can be done safely if done well. If it suits you, you can do it just fine. Um, for me, I just never found it necessary, especially in freshwater tanks. So I never do it regularly. Um, I just did this. I just did this experiment to actually to figure out if it actually works, and turns out it does with some side effects. So yeah, that is the end of my experiment. That is the conclusion. Carbon dosing works, but I never found it necessary and it has a side effect of increasing ammonia. Um, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more experiments like this and you want more tips on how to make no water change tanks.